Welcome back, everybody. This is going to be our Algebra 2 Essentials video on lesson number five, Multiplying Polynomials Homework Review Part 2. And in the previous video, we had watched, uh, I guess, um, multiplying binomials with binomials and also trinomials with binomials. Uh, I've, I find in this case that when we're multiplying anything bigger than two terms, um, a, you know, a trinomial or polynomial that's greater than two terms with anything else, I actually like using the uh, box method or the area array method they talk about in the classwork video. Um, it's a lot more organized. Uh, the I did do a situation where multiply using the Schubert method. A lot of connecting rainbows and stuff like that. So you'll be super careful. Uh, not so it's not necessarily one wrong way to do this. Uh, one way or the other, they're both okay. All right. So question number three. Uh, a square of unknown side length x inches has one side length increased by four inches and the other increased by seven inches. If the original square below with sides marked as x, so these are marked as x, okay, label the second diagram to represent the new rectangle constructed by increasing the size as described above. So the original square is this one here, this, this original square here. And so here is x and x. Now it says here that the, so the, the sides are increased by four inches. So this will be the increase by four. And this will be the increase by seven on this side here, plus seven. Now, what comes down to is that, and here's the funny part, okay? So we, we label the sides and this will be the product, so, of the, the binomials x plus 4 times x plus 7. One of the things that really must take a look here is that a lot of times the mistake students make is that when they multiply the two binomials, you really gonna see just people say x squared because x times x x squared and x times 4 times 7 is 28. So they only get x squared plus 28, which means from this diagram point of view, they only get the value of x squared and 4 times 28. And what they leave out are the two other values here. This numerical value of here and this numerical value here, which we will find values for. We'll fill them in. So it says here, um, label each of the second diagram with the areas in terms of x when applicable, okay? And state the product of x plus x plus 4 as a trinomial as, as well below. So we want to find the product, okay? And so the product we'll do, we'll use in this case both the both the uh, distributive method. So we'll do that first. We'll do x times x. So x times x will be x times x. And then we'll do in this case x times 7. So x times 7. And then we'll do 4 times x. And then we'll do 4 times 7. And we put it together, we're going to get x squared plus 7x plus 4x plus 28. And add together, we get x squared plus 11x plus 28, okay? And so if we did the, if we actually found the areas inside the box, yes, we would get x times x is x squared. And x times seven is seven x. And x times four is four x. And then four times seven is 28. And again, so I want to stress that when a lot of times students multiply, you x times x and 4 times 7, but they forget the middle terms. So I always tell students when you try doing FOIL, which is first outer, inner, last, they only do the FLA and they forget the OI, outer, inner. And so we see here in this diagram for the box method, we're going to notice in this case that there's a 7x and a 4x here. So we are going to miss out on that 11x, x squared plus 7x plus 4x, plus 28, plus 28, giving us the same product of 11x squared plus, x squared plus 11x plus 28. Now, part C of this video, or part C of this question of video, sorry, 
If the original square had a side length of 2 inches, then what is the area of the second rectangle, meaning the entire binomial, binomial to binomial? Well, let's do this from a point of view of just of, of, in this case, replacing the 2 for x in our expression. So we would have 2 plus 4 times 2 plus 7. So, four, so we have 6 times 9 is going to be 36. All right. In the same way, if we were to do this uh, by, by substituting in the 2, we would get this would be 6. This would be 9, all right? And we would get so oh, 6 times 6, not 30, sorry. What am I thinking, 36? Crazy. So sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. It's 54. I know you guys are thinking, 54, Mr. Gong. Yes, yes. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. We would notice that in each of the, in each of the parts, the x squared would be 2 squared, or 4. The, the 7, 7x seven would be... 14, 2 times 14, 2 times 7 is 14. The 4 times x or 4 times 2 would be 8. And then, of course, the 4 times 7 is 28. And add them all together, all right, we're going to get, well, 4 plus, 4 plus 8 is 12. 12 plus 28 is going to be uh, 40. And then, of course, 40 plus 14 is 54. So we're going to get 54 as well. Okay. And then finally, verify the trinomial in part B has the same value as C. Well, okay, so now we substitute in for the x squared plus 11x plus 28. We're going to substitute in a 2, so just 2 squared plus 11 times 2 plus 28. Well, we get 4 plus 22 plus 28. And 4 plus 22, well, you know what? I can group this together because it's a, because, you know, the associate property of addition means we can get, add these together first. So we have 54, so 50, 50 plus 4 will give us the sum of 54. So you would get the same exact thing. I'll put this together in the full page. Okay, so yeah, it should be. It has to be the same exact value before multiply and after multiply if I'm substituting in because they have to have the equivalent value in this case. Okay. So that was question number three. Now for question number four. Think about the expression x minus 8 times x plus 4. For what values of x will the expression be equal to 0? Show how you arrived at that answer. Well, here's the thing. We have something called the zero property of multiplication for, you know, in, a, in an algebra. Any number multiplied by 0 will be equal to zero. And so the way we approach this is going to be if we want to set the expression equal to zero, meaning x minus eight times x plus four, if the product is equal to zero, that must mean either x minus eight equals zero or x plus four equals zero. Well, if we have x minus eight equals zero, we're gonna add eight to both sides we get x equals 8. If we have x minus x plus 4 equals 0, subtract 4 on both sides, if x equals negative 4. And so there are two numerical values that work out, 8 and negative 4, that make the expression equal to 0. Now, it says here, write this product as equivalent to trinomial. So we'll do the box method or the area array method. This x minus 8, x plus 4, we're going to get in this case x squared minus 8x plus 4x minus 32. Okay, and so we'll have x squared. Now, negative 8 plus positive 4 is negative 4x minus 32. So this will be the equivalent trinomial. And now for the last part of this question, show that trinomial is also equal to zero at the larger value of x from part A. Now the larger value of x, well, I know eight is larger than negative four. So we can plug in either one, it would not matter. So we would plug in eight squared minus four times eight minus 32. Will that equal the zero? Well, eight squared is 64. 
minus 32 minus 32. Well, 64 minus 32 is 32. And then 32 minus 32 equals 0. So 0 equals 0. Voila, it is true. Okay? Now, a lot of you going, wait, I did this a while back and I was 1. Yes, you did. And so we're seeing the reasoning behind this because we're going to take these trinomials and express them later on as factors of each other. So when I have a factor, sometimes another factor, then I know if the product is zero, I can isolate numerical values. So it's a lot easier in factored form. Uh, just to make sure that negative four works out too, negative four squared minus four times negative four minus 32, will this also equal zero? Well, let's see. Well, negative four times negative four is positive 16. In case you type the calculator, make sure you put parentheses around the negative four before you square it. Otherwise, you get negative 16. So negative four times negative four is, is going to be positive 16. And the same thing applies here. Negative four times negative four is positive 16. Minus 32. 32 minus 32. Yes, that also equals zero. So it works out as well. Make this full page. So you can see in this case, ladies and gentlemen, that the multiplication is uh, we can use. I use the well, again the array method or the, the area array method um, to find this and also. But hopefully it was not so challenging for you guys. Are you guys okay with this? Um, again, it seems pretty straightforward for some of you who have who have done algebra one and very like, oh hey, this is just so good. Uh, hopefully for those who are going, oh man, I forgot a lot of this. It's okay. It's all about practicing and reviewing. And the great thing about the video is you may pause and go back and watch it again, which is totally cool with me because, you know, this is why I do the videos for you guys. All right. Um, so hopefully this is helpful to you. Uh, reminder, if you found this video helpful, please leave a like as well as subscribe to our channel uh, and turn on notifications when new videos are going to be added. Uh, just to let you guys know, I'm going to be working through the summer. Um, doing videos for algebra 2 so a lot of you guys who from geometry going to algebra 2 this hopefully will helpful to you prepare for uh the algebra 2 lessons coming up if we're back in the classroom it's still hopefully be helpful to you guys and um again i look forward to hearing uh, comments and feedback please leave questions comments and and feedback in the comment section below i hope that this was hopefully a good thing for you guys uh look forward to seeing you in the next video and uh, take care be safe